Okay, do I we heard have... James is streaming. Yes, I am streaming. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I don't know where. I... Yeah, it should be obvious, but oh, it's it's in the link. It's in announcements. Yep. Check announcements. You can you can check your at recent mention the new the new thing with Discord. Recent mentions. Oh, wow. I, I, okay, so I live in a recent mansion. I'm just gonna start explaining this from the ground up, um, and how people can use this. Uh, <laughs> just quit. Oh, sorry. Um, let's see. I just rage quit on you. Um, let's see here. Best way to describe this. So. This is the localization sheet. Um, it's a little bit clustered right now, but it essentially has a few things that you want to take a look at. The most important ones right here are like the keys, which are the the um, the reference that you have to use to get these values. Um, there's a few notes here from the game designers, just so that like you know what these 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 uh, values are used for. And then for every language, you have a, a column. Um, also, if you guys have any questions, just feel free to ask. Uh, um, okay, so what it contains... So it's, it's a mapping between these keys that you have here and the actual values. So whenever we load a language, we load all of these values that correspond to the keys. Um, and then whenever we change language, we unload all of this and then load another one. Say, like, for go example, going from English to Japanese, we go from Reimu to Reimu written in Japanese. Um, so it's pretty simple. From a localizer's point, um, you just read what's in the English column, and then in the corresponding column for that language, you write the... Um, you, write, you, write the uh, you write the corresponding uh, translation. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, da 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 da. Uh, there are a few other caveats, like for example, this little zero thing here. This is just to say that um another string will be included right here. So, like for example, uh, when you say player, you say player zero. Uh, you can insert a number in that position. Um. Uh, da, 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 da. So how does this actually get in game is is a better question. Um, so Horai's localization is a two part system. It uses Google Docs as uh, I'm sorry Google Spreadsheet as a store to make it easy for other people to edit it without ne needing to work with code. Um, and the other end is on the Unity end. This is more for like the game developer, uh, the, the game and uh, game designer and whatnot. Um, so here we have the uh, the main menu, and of course a lot of this stuff is localized. Um, so for example, if I if I uh, I uh, start the game right, uh, it'll load up the menu, and you'll see that it has multiplayer, single player options, and exit game because the the current um, version of uh, the the current language that the the game is set to is English. So if I go in into the language manager, which uh, don't worry about it, is just something that you have to. Uh, this is just part of the part of the, the game setup. There is a choice here for set setting the current language. You can actually just switch it on 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 the fly. Just say uh, Chinese simplified, for example, and it will translate everything that you you can think of. Um, like for example, if you switch to French or Russian. It's nice to be able to preview all the languages this way in, the, in a certain condition. Uh, let's switch it back to English now, for example. So how does this exactly work? Uh, the Let's drill down into, into this. Um, so we have the menu, right? Uh, we can expand it to look at everything that's active. The main one you're looking at are these little pieces of text. Uh, you can see that this is the multiplayer button right here, um, and that this one has a localized text script attached to it, along with a text. The text is what actually displays it. The localized text is the one that actually changes the value into something that is uh, localized. Uh, you can see that you have 
the reference to the text here. A uh, format don't really need to worry with it. If you leave it blank, it'll just put put the the localized string in. Uh, and then finally, the key. This key right here, the menu dot multiplayer key, is the one that corresponds to here. And you can sort of see uh, menu dot multiplayer is the key, and then it will pull up the English uh, English equivalent for it, which is multiplayer. Um, there are there there is also a scripting API for this. So like certain things like uh, handling character names and whatnot can al always be pulled up in this manner. So there's not too many keys right now, but as we expand the game, um, the uh, the number of keys will grow eventually, and um, we'll always just like t uh, ping the localizers whenever uh, we have new stuff for them to translate. Uh, so it's pretty easy. Uh, all you got to do is add a, uh, whenever you, we have, need to add a new language, you just add a new column here. And then for along that column, you just translate every single possible string. Uh, so, uh, that is the basics. Does anyone have any questions? Uh... Anybody? Hello? So just add a new line whenever there's a... Yes, we just add a new line every single time there's a, uh, a, a, new, a new thing to be translated or something that oh, is displayed on the screen. Uh, it will, we'll be able to... Yeah, this is a little bit of an awkward setup. I'm 30 second delay. Uh, I guess, let me unmute myself for this part. Okay. Uh, I guess it'll catch up later. Um, I unmuted myself. You guys can go ahead and ask your questions directly then. Um, I'll, I'll do like a thorough like code walkthrough of this as well later. Uh, um, if anyone is interested. Uh... Hmm. Does anyone have any questions? So does it like always just pull from the from this sheet, or is it? Oh no, like no, no. Some... I'll, I'll explain that in just a second. It's it's two part. It 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 has one part that pulls from there into Unity and turns it into a Unity asset, and then the asset is then read at at runtime. All right. Um, I can explain yeah. this further as, as needed. So uh, there's a little thing right here called the localization generator. It, it, you don't actually include this in the game. It's best not to because it's gonna, it'll break your game if, if it's actually included with it. But uh, all you got to do is include a Google link. So if you go to here, go to uh, File, Publish to the Web, right. and then you see I'll this see little... in 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, there, there is this little link right here, and then you just need to include this part. The part after the D... Um, is this large, like, set of, uh, large, like, base64 value. And you just gotta copy-paste that into here. Uh, a few other ones to add are key and notes. Um, you should, that's just there to, um, add things that need to be ignored that are not treated as languages. And then finally, you just need to add a save folder. You just drag the folder into there and it'll save it, save it. Um, so whenever you uh, have an edit or something that you want to import into the game, you just open up your localization generator. Uh, you can create this by going to, I believe, assets, create, uh, whore IT house. Wait, no, it's not under there. Where is it? Oh, I know. I think it was under... Shoot, I don't even know where I put it. Uh... It's somewhere here. Ah, uh, here. Hori localization generate. It'll, if you don't, if it, it'll automatically look for generator if it can't find one. Um, it, it does the exact same thing as just hitting generate. Um, but yeah, so it'll it'll you, it'll basically prompt you to create one of these. Um, and then it'll have you, it'll generate it. So if you hit generate, um, it'll read from that one and then. Uh, it'll generate language files for each of these corresponding languages. Um, so, 
I guess this is a good point to get into. Um, so where it saves it is under resources, uh, under this lang folder. Uh, so each of these is a string set. It's really just an array of strings. It's just like X number of strings. And then there's a separate keys one, which just maps a number to a, to an actual uh, an actual string. And then this these two are combined to create the mapping between uh, um, uh, between uh, between the key and the actual localized string. If that makes sense. Um, so these are just sort of more or less read at runtime, and these are automatically generated for you from it, so you just sort of set it up. The only thing that you really need to worry about is uh, setting up, making sure that this is under a resources, um, uh, under a resources uh, folder. This, the resources is a special folder within Unity that lets you like, load things dynamically, um, just from code. Uh, not too much to worry about. And then all you need to do is provide the localization resource directory. By default, if you leave it blank, it'll find it eventually. Um, however, um, it is better to actually specify the folder directory. So you just do resources and then anything under that, you just write in the, the directory name. Uh, you can also provide a reference to the, the strings, of the keys. Um, and then this it, this is also the part that uh, saves which um, version which language you got. So it it saves uh, which what's the current language um, uh, of under lang, and then um, it says that default the, the the default value for this is English. Um, so it, it'll it'll load back the exact one that they it, it's like a permanent a persistent store. Um, that's about it. So that was the non-programmer overview of like exactly how it works. Um, there's some nice uh uh editor. I'm sorry, a nice uh script that you can use to um. I'm, I'm sorry, like APIs that you can use that gets you a lot of various information about the entire setup. Uh. Language is basically a dictionary. It just tell it, it, it's exactly what you th think. It's a mapping between keys to, um, to, to the 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 value. So you can just get the current language for for uh, um, that you're currently using. Uh, you can get uh, a list of all the the the, uh, the languages that are available, all of the keys that are available, um, and this one is actually pretty nice. You just provide it a key and it'll give you um, the localized string for whatever that is in the current language. Um, and there's some events to like check for when languages change, uh, check for whether you have a key for a certain thing or not. Um, this is just sort of there to set the language. Um, and this is just setting up and reading all the data. That's, that's, that's not all that important. Uh, Oh, and there is a little. There's the saving the uh, the current language preference, uh, and there's obviously a load language given a certain thing. Yeah, that's more or less it. Uh, so for those who are working on localization, um, all you really need to do is. Get access to this. Just ask me for permit. Ask me for uh, access to this, um, and uh, we'll get you set up. That's basically how it works. All, all you got to do is type it into here, and then I can handle. I or someone else can handle uh, importing the the updated strings. Um, with that, uh, anyone have any big questions? Uh, let me check Twitch and Discord. Hello. Uh, this is pretty damn quiet. 
it is. Uh, no, you do not need to install Unity to translate. All you gotta do is uh, get access to the. Um, well, there, there. Okay, okay. Um, you need to get access to Unity to uh to test it to make sure that whatever you wrote you wrote in there appears nicely in in the game. Um. Uh. Um. But otherwise, I think that's about it. The, you don't really need to. Um, you don't particularly need to. Uh, you don't need access to to the to Unity to translate. All you need is access to the spreadsheet, which um, I will make available. Uh, in fact, I believe there is a. Um, Oh yes, we also do need non-Latin fonts. If you know any good ones, uh, that would that would be great. Um, I think they all the current ones we have all default to some pretty shitty looking. Uh, like for example, if we go back into the game, you can sort of see. Uh, the it, it looks nice and nice and pretty in English, maybe in French as well. But then once you move into something like Thai, oh man, it, 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 it really does not look that great. Neither with Chinese. Chinese looks like it's... Yeah. So yeah, some fonts, some better Asiatic fonts are would be a nice change. Um, doesn't look like... Uh, yeah, we do have a number of Spanish translators here. Um, I believe uh, Vex... Uh, I don't know if Grandpa was doing it. Um, I think the Sombras and a few other people said they were doing um, Brazilian. Uh, did I say Brazilian? Fuck shit. Brazilian pork from Portuguese. I'm sorry. Um, uh, uh, yeah, that's more or less it. Jesus, Twitch is, uh, that's, yeah, that's, it's a pretty simple explanation. I'll probably be uploading this to YouTube now. I, I, I know I said fucking, I, shit. I, I know I screwed up. Um. Any issues with, like, right to left fonts? Um, you're gonna have to write it that way. Pretty much. I mean, if, if once you, in in that language, like if, for example, if you're doing something like Arabic, which is right to left, um, yeah, it 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 should work just out just fine. Um, we haven't done full internationalization, which is a little bit different from localization. Localization more or less just does translation. Um, internationalization means customizing the entire game. When it when it comes to the UI and whatnot, to meet uh, the cultural standards of um, uh, of that certain culture, I don't know whether we're going that far or not. Um, I don't think it's fully necessary. Um, but we we can do this. We we can if we if we need to. If if people are mad that 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 they they feel like they can't use it, we we probably need to deal with it. Um, I mean, it's not like it's unusable. So I'm pretty sure it should probably be fine. Yep. So yes, that's more or less it. Um, do use the Discord. Uh, if there is, look over the um the 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 localization uh channel actually has a link to the the document at the top. Um, at, 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 on on the description. Um, do take a look through it. If you guys have any like issues with how how things are being translated, do talk about them. Um. Yeah, that's more or less it. If you, those who don't really want to get into the code stuff, you can go ahead and leave now. But if like uh, otherwise, I'm I'm gonna go into exactly how this entire thing works, uh, from from like piece by piece, um, at this moment. Okay, uh, let me move over. What is this? Oh, there's an update. Discord. Uh, let's see here.
Okay, so the main piece right here is the language manager. Um, so what it essentially does is almost entirely during initialization. So it creates a new language uh, at the beginning, and this is the one language that it's used that is used across all all of the um, uh, all the setups. Uh, let's see here. You then it loads these string sets, which are basically just serialized uh, string values, and it's loaded in from resources. So it finds that directory, loads all of these string sets under it, and then runs through it. It, it, it then says... Uh, it. So each of the string sets are named accordingly to, by their... Um, by their uh, the, by the language, so the English one will be named English, so on and so forth. It makes it easier that way. Um, the key set is just the keys, um, and then it uh, it does a check um, to make sure that uh, on the system language, uh, this is provided by Unity. Um, the system language is just set to application dot current language. Um, it then does a check to say, uh, do we, is there already a previous persistent store saying uh, do we already have a preference? Uh, uh, one of the like options that uh, that are set up for the character. Uh, I'm not the character. I'm sorry. The the player to to run with. Um, if it is that, um, load that in. Otherwise, just transform what the current system language is. Um, check whether the languages we have contains it. Otherwise, or if the language is currently unknown, go to the default language. So it loads in the default one, which I believe is English right now. Um, and then uh, it logs it, uh, and it sets the preference to that value. So it, it says the language is now set to this. Uh, it then unloads all the un unnecessary, um, the unnecessary languages. They're, they're all generally pretty darn small. Um, and then sets the language to that to that one, and then makes makes sure that uh, it's not destroyed. This 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 object needs to stay almost all like. In place all the time, uh, and then when the object is either destroyed or the application is quit, you need to uh, uh, you need to be able to save the, save the save the preference again. So this is the one little thing that that we have here. The load language uh, lets you load whatever language in. Um, do, 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 do. It just sets it. So setting the language essentially is. Iterate through all of the the strings, match them up with their keys, and then save that to the language itself. So if we take a look at the language, the language class, it, it, it more or less is just a dictionary. Um, you can sort of see here that it, you provide a key, it'll provide the localized string back. It's more or less basically just that, based on a backing dictionary, uh, and it constructs it based on the two two string sets, which are which are numerable strings. Uh, so the other big one that makes this darn easy is localized text. So let's open that. So localized text, um, it does a few things. Uh, so it has it has a set localization key. Whenever you change this key to something else, it'll it'll retrieve it from uh, the localization store. So it accesses the language manager. Uh, checks whether it has a key and then loads the the key and then sets it to the text. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, it makes sure it gets the text. Uh, and so when it when the it starts, it gets an access to the language manager. Make sure uh, makes makes sure that there is one. If there isn't one, it doesn't do anything. Uh, it subscribes to the on change language, um, so whenever the language is changed, this this uh, this, this event is fired. Um, so, uh, Magus, you were ta we were talking about like functions, right? And this is how you handle events in C sharp. Uh, da 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 da. Um, it makes sure that the localization key is not is there, um, and then pulls it in and loads it in, loads up loads up the value. And then when it's when it when you do that, it displays it thanks to the text. The text is the the view for it. Mm -hmm. And so this this function is called. All right. Uh, sorry if it's uh, thirty minutes uh, thirty seconds late. It's okay. So the 
um, the language when you when this function is just called every single time the language changes. Uh, you can do this either through the editor or whenever we change the vo and change the language in um, uh, in game. So there currently is not an option for it in game, but we can add it in uh, pretty easily. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, so this is sort of just it. This just runs through it, makes sure that the entire thing is not empty, and then just rolls with it. Uh, da -da -da. That's more or less how the entire thing works. It's just a simple little layer to make sure that we can switch to wh whatever language is available. Um, and th the good thing so is... On the function start, that's only called like when you start the thing. Um, you also have changing the language in there, but... Wait, let me unmute you. Okay, so um, the this is called at the very first frame that it is available. Um, so what we're doing here is an event subscription. Um, if that makes sense. Oh shoot, I completely forgot. There is no. Well, I think we found a found a bug. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, so uh, go on. Okay, so um, the way that this it, it, it works like this. So uh, it finds a language manager. So you have a reference to it here, and then it says this little thing right here: on change language is an event. So this is like any other function. You can add things to it, and it'll execute all of them. If it, if it, if if it, um, uh, whenever it it, so it's an it, it's some it's a singular event that happens, and whenever it happens, it triggers certain things to uh, it triggers results. So when uh, you can have multiple of these localized text subscribing to that event. So when you when you when this event is fired, so when this event is called more or less, um, this every single subscriber, which is this uh, which is this function on each of those localized texts, um, it's uh, shoot. Um, each time, so let, let's say you have like. Four, four localized texts, just like in the main menu. You have the multiplayer, single player, so on and so forth, right? Um, mm -hmm. All of them are subscribed to the exact same event. So whenever this... Um, uh, sorry. This, this event is called, mm -hmm. uh, it, will, it will effectively call all of them. So it will say on change language on this localized text, on this one, on this one, and, and on this one. So all of them will execute. In order uh, of which they subscribed. Um, if, All right. Uh, so whenever the language manager says the language has changed, it it'll go ahead and do so. Um, and I think the only place it is called is under set language. So whenever the language is set to something new, um, uh, it will uh, it'll check whether it is null first. If it's if it is, um, then no worries. And then it will call it with the argument of current language. So you see that this is an action, which means that it it's a it's a function that doesn't return anything, but it takes one parameter, and that is a language. Um, I know this is a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's just a feature of um, feature of C sharp. So th mm -hmm. this is called every single time it's changed. Um, so what we're doing here is subscribing to it. So it's saying, tell me when the language changes. And then when it is, this, uh, this function right here will be called. All right. that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, but I, one bug that I just found is um, uh, when you need to be able to unsubscribe from things as necessary. So I'm just going to add that in now.
Uh, uh, you said you're posting this up onto YouTube, right? I, I will be posting this up on YouTube, yes. All right. Do not so I don't have that. to always ask you about shit. <laughs> Make sure that your things aren't null. So, okay. So this this is just saying that whenever one of these is destroyed, uh unsubscribe the uh the this to to from the from the language manager. That's more or less what it's just saying. Okay, um, and that's also the reason, right, uh, why we can do on-the-moment swaps, and we don't need to check every frame that the language has changed. So it's it's a nice way to like keep. Also, you can you see that like last time I loaded the game, um, it was in Chinese, and then when I exited, it was still in Chinese. So and when I loaded this up now, it's in Chinese now, instead of uh, it being in English. So if I go up here and you can sort of see that this only works in uh only works when it's um when it, when the, when you're playing the game. Mhm. Mm and we can set this to why is it say China? That was on the on destroy save thing that you had earlier, right? Yes. Mm. So if we set it to the Dutch or something like that, we can exit the game. So like this is equivalent to shutting down the entire game and when we start it up again it's still there, which is pretty nice. Um, this is this way people can keep their lang language settings and not have to be open, not have to set the language every single time they start the game. Uh, do, do, do. Does that come with Unity, or is that something you built? Uh, it's part of part of it is built by Unity. Um, so we're we're using something known as Player Prefs. Um, mm. You can go look into it uh, or whatnot uh, yourself. Uh, it, it's. It, it's a way, a nice way to keep track of nice little options um, that need to stay persistent from gameplay to gameplay. Um, pretty good for like options settings and whatnot. Uh, there is another one. Oh, like you can sort of see what I'm, I'm, I'm working with here. <laughs> uh, a lot of these are custom little things that I've added. Uh, one. Oh, wait, I, did I remove it? I think I did. Crap. Oh well. Um, well, there was an option to clear all of them for us, but yes, that is more or less Hori hor localization. Um, yeah, that's about it. I'm gonna, okay. unless you guys want to watch me play Neptunia V2, I'm gonna stop streaming here. <laughs> Have fun.